Hi, welcome to Artificial Intelligence for Business. Okay. Uh, today we'll do the same uh, continuation as last meeting, which is in data pre-processing. Okay. So given the data that you have collected, so how you collect the data is up to you. So how do you collect? For example, you can collect using sensor data. Okay. Or if it is data from the web, so you, you get directly from the uh, tracking that you set inside the web, or you can also collect data using questionnaire survey, for example. <clears throat> okay. uh, now, if you have the data already, so what you will do? First thing you will do is to explore the data. Okay. Check the data type. Last meeting, we discussed about data type, right? The measurement of scale, either it is nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio type, okay? Now, uh, suppose your data is quantitative. That means uh, your data is either interval or ratio type. <clears throat> then what kind of analysis you will do first? Right? So first thing you will do, of course, we will check the central tendency, right? What is the mean? What is the uh, variance? Uh, uh, sorry, the mean, the median, the mode, the mode. Okay. And second things that you want to check is the variation of the data. Okay. So variation of data, you, you can compute using uh, variance or standard deviation. Okay. If it is quantitative data. Uh, if it is qualitative data, for example, ordinal data, then you start to calculate using uh, interquartile range. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and then last meeting, I explained the uh, two way okay, to see your data. Say, for example, uh, here. If you have uh, more than one variable, if you have one variable, of course, this is what you will do, right? So uh, first you, you calculate the uh, this mean variance and standard deviation, quartile, interquartile range, and so on. Okay, these are the, uh, if you have only one variable. So if you have more than one variable, what you will do is to check the correlation. Okay. So first thing you do is to check the mean and the variance, the variation of the data in per variable, okay? And next things you will do is to check the correlation. So the correlation is, this is the formula. And this is the example of positive correlation or negative correlation. Okay, positive correlation means uh, the larger X, the larger the, uh, Y, okay? So, both are going in the same direction. Well, negative correlation means uh, the larger x, then uh, the y is actually smaller. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, last meeting, we also discussed about this variable space and object space. I hope you still remember. So if you look at the data table and you look at its row, okay, its row as a point, then uh, you can plot that as variable space, something like this. Okay, so the point represent by factor from origin, right? So the number of factor is the same as the number of row. Another way to look at the data okay, is actually to use its column. Okay. Its column as a one point. In this case, uh, we say this is an, in the object space. Okay. So the number of factor now, not number of rows, but now the number of column. Because the column represents the variables, then the number of factor represents the number of variables. Okay. 
again one point represented by the factor from the origin so this is the example if you have only two variables like this that means uh, you have two factor okay so how do you calculate the factor in the object space you calculate the standard deviation of it okay and and then the angle is the arc cos of the correlation okay so this is last meeting so is there any question about this that we discussed last meeting no question no okay so next is uh if you have the data, suppose this is the data in your left uh, chart here, x and y, and then you minus it with the mean of x and the y, you minus it with the y uh, mean of the y, then you will center the data. Okay. So the effect of uh, centering the data mean the mean of the center data will be zero. Okay. So only the mean will be zero, but uh, the standard deviation, the correlation will not change when you center the data. Okay. It's just shifted. <clears throat> okay. Now, another way to check if you have one, each variable, yeah, one variable, you, you will check the uh, distribution of it. Okay. So, when you plot the distribution, okay, then you start to see whether they have a, a symmetric or a, a positively skewed or negatively skewed. Okay, so the positively skewed mean the, the the median is in the middle and the mode is in the left. Okay, the mean will be in the right. Uh, negatively skewed is the other way around. So the mean in the the median is in the middle. The mean is in the left side okay. and then the mode will be on the right side so of course when it is symmetric the mean median and mode are in this uh, coincide in the same point right and any data that you have gather any data okay if you uh minus that data with the mean and then you divide that data with the standard deviation, okay, any quantitative data here, okay, then, then the result will be normally distributed with a symmetric like pearl shape, okay, with uh, two parameter with this uh, mean uh, and standard deviation. Okay. So uh, the PDF, Okay, the probability distribution function of the normal distribution are given uh, in this formula. Yeah. Now, there is a, in statistics, there is a, what is called a central limit theorem. Okay. What, what does it say? That the mean of n variable drawn independently from the same distribution will always be a normal distribution with this uh, uh, value, okay? that the mu will be exactly the same as the mean and the uh, standard deviation will be a standard deviation divided by square root of the n. n is the number of variables. Okay? Now the sum, the sum of n variables thrown independently from the same distribution will always be normal distributed. Yeah? So, the keyword here is, is called IID. What is that IID? Independent identical distribution. Meaning you have the same distribution, okay? And they are independent. One and not related to others. Okay. If you draw the sample from them, okay, the mean is always normally distributed so this is guaranteeing that uh, uh, basically every every measurement that you can measure 
Okay. Uh, practically, you can approach using normal distribution. <clears throat> so this is the example. Suppose you have uh, 20, uh, 64 variables okay, from a uniform distribution. Okay. And then you get the mean 25, the variance is 16. Then what is the approximate normal distribution of it? If you, from this sample, okay, then you can start to calculate that this is actually normal 25,2. What is that 25,2 means? The 25 is the, the mean, okay? And then two is the standard deviation. Okay. Now, uh, if you have a standard normal distribution, what is the meaning of standard normal distribution? That means the, uh, the mean is zero and the variant or the standard deviation is one. Okay. Now, if you have a standard normal distribution, then 68%, approximately 68% of your measurement is within Okay, mu plus minus sigma. Mu is the mean, sigma is the standard deviation. Okay, 95% approximately of your uh, measurement will be within two sigma. And 99.7% of your measurement will be within three sigma from the mean. Okay, so plus minus uh, three, that means you have six sigma. Okay. So in quality control, you probably heard the, the word six sigma. That is coming from the normal distribution, right? So what does that mean? That means uh, I want to cover about 99% of my data. Okay. <clears throat> now, if you have uh, real world data, you will not have only one or two variables, isn't it? You will have many variables, right? So if you have many variables, I want to get the correlation of it, okay? I want to get the covariance of it. How, how, how do I do it? Then you need to do it in matrix form, okay? So say your multi-variable data, multi-dimensional uh, data, okay? Is, uh, you put it into matrix like this, okay? And of course, its column still represent the data, its row represent one, one object. Okay. Now, what you will do is you calculate the mean for each variable, okay. and then you minus the data with the mean. Okay. Then you will create what is called a center data, right? And then you calculate the covariance matrix. How do you calculate covariance matrix? Covariance matrix you compute by uh, multiplying the transpose of the center matrix data by itself, and then you divide by n minus one. N is the number of data. Okay. So uh, covariance matrix is always symmetric matrix. That means the transpose of it is always the same as itself, right? So uh, from the covariance matrix, then you can calculate the correlation matrix. How do you get that? Okay. So you get the diagonal matrix of the covariance matrix, and then uh, you take the square root of it. Okay, one over the square root. And then multiply it with the uh, covariance matrix, okay, on the both side, left and right, then you will get the uh, correlation matrix. So basically correlation matrix is the normalized covariance matrix. Yeah? Okay, so let's practice, okay. <clears throat> Let's practice to compute the covariance matrix. And then finally you compute the correlation matrix. Yeah? So suppose this is your data. 
So you type the data here. Okay. So what you will do is to uh, get the center data. After that, you do a covariance matrix. Okay. And then you compute the uh, correlation matrix from, from here. Uh, of course, we, we, we try to do this in Excel, but uh, in reality, you eventually will create this uh, computation in, in your own programming language. Okay. So can you practice? Uh, what is the value? Let me check. So I type here. Like so. data let's do the same data so that we can uh, compare later is it correct 2 23 3 28 32 32 again 37 35 40 50 55 75 and 53 yeah, correct okay so this is the data what we will do Okay. Given the covariance matrix, uh, given the data, how are you going to compute the covariance matrix? Okay, of course, first thing to do is to get the, the mean, right? So the mean is the average of this every variable. So this is the mean, I color it differently. Okay. And now I get the center data. Center. And I have X and Y. How do you get the center data? This data you minus with the, the mean. Okay. So because the mean does not change, so I will put it this way. So I copy. Is that correct? Hmm. So I got the center data here. Okay. So once I got the center data, n is how many? I will put n equal to the count. Eh? I need to get the count of this data. How many? The count of my data. So I have 11 data, is that correct? This one. No, I have 12 data. Okay, so n is 12. Then I need to get the, the center data transpose, right? So I need to get the center data transpose. So let's call this x bar. I will call this x bar. It is the center data. Then I need to get the transpose of it, right? So transpose of x bar. 
Okay. What is the size? The size, if the center data have size of uh, 12 by 12,2, <coughs> then the transpose of center data have size of what? 2,12, right? So two comma twelve one two three four five six seven eight nine ten twelve. Okay, so I press F two and then shift control enter. Okay, I got that. Okay, so let's make it uh, three digit so that I can make it nice. Okay, so this is the center data. So what I will do once I get the center data, what I will do? I need to get, I need to get the, covariance matrix. This is the formula of covariance matrix, right? So I need to multiply, so I will multiply first, eh? So I will multiply X bar, multiply by X bar, X bar transpose, X bar transpose, okay, multiply by X bar. Okay. So this is the X bar transpose. I call this X bar transpose. Then I need to multiply M mole, right? What I will multiply? X bar transpose and X bar. Okay. So what is the size? X bar transpose is uh, two times twelve. Okay. So the size is two times 12 multiplied by 12 times two. So equal two times two, okay? Then uh, two times two. There, I got this. So, but this is not yet uh, covariance. So to get the covariance, I need to divide this with n. Where is the n? Okay, let's call this n. N underscore. And to get the covariance, covariance. Sample covariance. So got this x bar transpose times x bar divided by n minus one. Okay. okay, so this is the result of covariance matrix, okay? Is that correct? Why oh, I got different result here? Hmm? Something is wrong. Oh, the n is two. The n is number of variables. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So. Let me check. Go for. Go for some polls. Go for sample of your data. Let me see. Some. Oh. For example, so yeah. oh, for samples of this one, comma this one. Yeah. Twenty-seven. So I think it is correct. Twenty-seven. What is this? Hmm. So I think the one in the slide is not correct. So this is correct. And then what you will do? A. Uh, if you want to get the diagonal matrix, so this is the diagonal matrix D of S. So this is the S. Yeah? So we put it S underscore. Okay, so the diagonal is actually this one, comma, oh, sorry, this one and this one. Is that correct? So then you get the uh the inverse of the diagonal matrix so the inverse of diagonal matrix is rather simple okay uh, yes that one is one over okay this one also one over this one. Yeah. exactly another diagonal matrix Okay. Then you can calculate the cor correlation of it. The cor correlation matrix is the same as covariance matrix. Now, what is the formula? The diagonal matrix in first. Oh, I need to get the square root. Sorry, I need to get the square root of this. Square root. Same thing with this square root. A. Then uh, you multiply. Okay. Then this one, the inverse of diagonal. Okay. Multiply by. Oh wait. And to multiply the covariant first with the inverse diagonal. And then I multiply again one more time. The inverse diagonal. So you get that uh, correlation matrix here. So you see the correlation matrix in the diagonal element always one. Okay. And the off diagonal element is the actual correlation between the two variables. Okay, until here, any question?
the tribe. Yes. Processing. The process. Process. For me. Kanish, your 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 uh, microphone is not so clear. Do you want to type it in the chat, probably? Um, what does a covariance matrix usually used for? Covariance matrix, covariance matrix represent the uh, the variance between two variables. Okay, so it's the same as uh, uh, variance or the standard deviation. So if standard deviation, you measure only the variation within one variable, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So how about if you have two variables? The variation in two variables. Uh, let me draw. Okay. Okay. So something like this. So if you have two variables, the drawing is like that, right? X and Y. So now you want to know the spread in two variables. Yeah. If the covariant is a one, then uh, the spread is equal to all direction, right? So the real sometimes you will get it something like this. So for example, this is what this is the covariance is five and two. Okay. So then you will get a different spread. Can you see it now? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So uh this is uh, in normal distribution, eh? Gaussian distribution. But uh, your data, you don't, you're not sure if they are normal or not, right? So you start to calculate the uh, uh, covariance matrix so that you will know, okay, at least the spread of uh, between two variables. So this is example of uh, the meaning of covariance. Can I answer the question? Um, it gives me some idea. More understanding, yeah, but yeah, but still, I'm still confused. Still confused. Uh, but do you do you understand the meaning of uh, standard deviation? Um, it's it's like like an area where uh, where the data is can be called like normal, not normal or an outline. No. no. Like, Standard deviation is not the area. Okay? So the standard deviation is the deviation in how far it is from the mean. It's a yeah. mean from the mean to the to the data, right? So larger the data, uh, larger the standard deviation mean your uh, curve will be flattened. Yeah. The area under the curve is always one, right? So if your standard deviation is large. That means your 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 uh, distribution is flat. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Now that one you understand because you have only one variable, right? But mm -hmm. in reality, you don't have one variable data. You have multi-variable data, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 
in AI, you always have many variables. Okay, so the question is, I want to know the, the spread of two variables. Why two? Uh, if you can imagine two, then you can imagine three and so on. But uh, two is uh, simply simple to, to imagine because you can see it in 3D. Okay, if you have a, a three variable, then uh, you, you start to get confused because that is already uh, above the 3D. Right. Remember a while ago I showed you that this so, is so if a covariance matrix, then it will be compared to boost boost mean. Oh is it like uh, yeah. I asked you to compute a while ago? The mean is always zero. You remember? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. So the mean is always center. That's why I asked you to compute. Mm -hmm. Without that computation, you will not know that actual covariance matrix is computed based on zero mean. Okay. So, and if you calculate the correlation matrix, okay, then uh, you start to see the correlation between two variables. Again, correlation and covariance can only be computed if the variables are quantitative. Okay? When I say quantitative, mean either interval or ratio type. How about if your data is actually ordinal? You cannot. Okay. The, the correlation has no, no real meaning there. There is a way later, I will show you. Okay, there is a way to convert the ordinal number into ratio. Yeah. Is correlation matrix difference uh, with R square? R square is different from correlation. R square is a correlation square. Also, oh, the correlation matrix is the R. Okay. Right. Because the R can be negative. Yeah. Where well, it's always between zero to one. Right. So it's important to see the correlation matrix. Okay? The covariance matrix, you can only see this is big or small. But uh, when you standardize that into a correlation matrix, then you can start to see between negative one to positive one, right? So then you start to see, oh, I want to get, when you create a model later on, remember this, okay? When you create a model, for example, regression model or a supervised learning model, uh, the independent variables, okay, must not correlate to each other. If your correlation is nearly one, say 0 0.8, above 0 0.8, it means okay, independent variables. Then uh, your result of the uh, model is always very good, but that is misleading. So the first thing to do is to check the correlation and if the correlation is very high, then you need to remove that. Why? Because they are actually uh, linearly dependent. Right? Your model is actually linearly dependent. So if, if one variable is multiplied of the others, that is called linearly dependent. Yeah. In that case, uh, you need to remove one of them. Okay. Or another way later, you will do what is called PCA. Okay. So you make it independent. Okay. So first thing first, okay, you need to check the correlation. First. If the correlation is high, don't use directly. 
If you use the uh, data directly, okay, without transformation, then you get very good result, and then you are very happy. Yeah. Okay. But it's overfit. It's incorrect. That's why data pre-processing is important because this is the time that you start to see what is your data inside. Go deeply inside the data. Okay. 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 How about if your data is actually uh, nominal? Then you cannot use correlation. So you use uh, uh, independent test. Maybe. What do you mean by nominal? Like index? Like an index? No, index is ordinal. You forget. Last meeting we discussed about it. Oh, yeah. Right. So <laughs> Nominal mean uh, you only assign the, the the name, the value into numbers, but there is no order. Oh, I see. Okay. Categorical. Mm -hmm. Categorical data are nominal data. Okay. okay. For example, the color, gender. Okay. Nominal data. Right. Mm -hmm. Qualitative. Again and again, we will uh, discuss about uh, this nominal, ordinal, okay, and quantitative data. Usually, interval and ratio, we just categorize it as quantitative data. We don't treat them differently. <laughs> but uh, for nominal data or categorical data, they are very different. Ordinal data is very different okay, from the quantitative counterpart. For example, your data is string. String is practically nominal data. Right? Word, for example, sentence, nominal data. So in nominal data, you cannot calculate correlation. You can only count the frequency. OK? So I hope you can calculate the correlation already. So this is the example of three by three of correlation matrix. Right. So you take the square root of the inverse diagonal and then you multiply both sides on the left and on the right. <clears throat> then you get the correlation matrix. And you see that the correlation matrix in this example is very big. Yeah? So negative 0 0.77, right? And then make it uh, positive 0 0.8, and then negative 0 0.9. Yeah? So they are uh, heavily correlated. Basically, this is the same data. It's actually only one variable. Okay, it becomes three variables, but actually, in the essence, they are actually only one variable. <clears throat> because one can be obtained from the others by simply multiplying with uh, some uh, uh, positive or negative number. Okay, they are linearly dependent. Okay, so with that view, we have uh, accomplished the data exploration. So you compute the uh, central tendency, yeah? measurement of spread and distribution, yeah? uh, whether it is uh, one dimension or two dimension or multi dimension. 
Okay. Okay. So the next topic will be filtering, but uh, are you ready for that? Why are you still doing the correlation matrix? I'm still trying. Okay, so I will wait. So when you finish, you uh, oh, you don't have to wait. It's okay. <laughs> uh -huh. I can I can also I can always look at the recording. Okay, okay. Okay, let's let's continue then. Yeah. So I will just save this one and create a new one. Let me open a new Excel. Okay, and let's go to the uh, filtering. This is a new topic, okay? Why this is included in uh, data pre-processing? Because you need to filter your data first if your data is very noisy, right? So here is my formula, okay? There is what is called pattern and plus the noise, you got data. What you want is not the data. What you want is the pattern, right? But unfortunately, your data consists of both pattern and the noise, okay? Now, there is a, filter there are two type of filter actually uh, this is the most important filter okay, one is called low pass filter the other one is called high pass filter so if you put <coughs> low pass filter to the data you will get pattern okay if you put high pass filter to the data you will get the noise of course, because of this, so data minus the pattern will be the noise. Okay. If your filter is perfect. <laughs> Unfortunately, our filter is not really perfect, okay? But they are helpful. So let's do this. Let's generate uh, two pattern, okay? And then you add noise, okay? The first pattern is sign of the X plus noise of random. The second pattern is the cos sign of the X. And then you add Gaussian noise. So this is also called a white noise. Let's do that. So I create, uh, I open a new Excel sheet here. Okay. So let's put this. I put X. Okay, so <clears throat> and I have the uh, data. I will call this data. Okay, let's let's do a, the first data. Okay. Let's do the first data. X is, I will put from, uh, how much do you want? Zero, and then I will add uh, 0 0.0, 0 0.01 or 0 0.1. Okay, let's do it. Okay, and then your data is supposed to be, your pattern is sine X. Okay, sine of this X. And then I will add some random some random value. Oh, this is so big. Okay, but anyway, it's okay. Wait, what happened? Copy it down. Oh, there. And then now I will plot. Okay. There. Can you see it? Sign 
somewhat you see there are certain clutter, right? But there is some noise. So I want to get the pattern only. Can you get it? The pattern is sine, sine x. Okay, let's create another paper. So I create a new one, C2. Again, I put the same x. Okay, let's copy. Okay, I copy here. The difference is now, instead of sine x, I will calculate it as cos x. Okay, I will put as cos x. And then I will add white noise. Okay, so to get the white noise, let me insert here. So I need to get the mean and standard deviation. Okay. So let me put mean is one and zero. Here is my input data. Okay, so I will call this mean. And I will call this standard deviation, STD. Right, so I will put cos x. What is the cos x? This is the cos x. Plus what? Normal inverse, yeah? Norm inverse. What is the probability random, yeah? Probability is random. What is the mean? Mean is this one. What is the standard deviation is this one. Okay. Then I will plot it. Huh? I copy this. Now I plot. All right. There. Wow. Now you see. Now you cannot even see the pattern. Okay. Unlike the normally distributed. Okay. When I go, you can see the button, right? So every time I press F9, I get a different result. But you know, the button can be seen, yeah? But when I put it as white noise, wow, it's a little bit difficult to see, right, the button. Okay, that one first. You make it. If you have uh, this formula, so if you have some certain gradient, okay, and certain intercept C here, gradient is M, similar to a while ago, then you can create trend pattern, okay, and you add some noise, okay. That is another way. So this is a, a cyclical pattern, and here is the trend pattern. It is practically just a line, and then you add noise. Okay. It's up to you which one you want to use. Okay. Oh, can you share your screen if you have done? I guess here. Oh, cool. I don't know if it's, but let me just. What, it's, is, uh, <laughs> what is this text? I don't know why it's like this. Um, sorry, Apa? Can, can I see the X? Oh, you put random with me. Okay. And just, it's random, normally random, yeah. And what, what is your Y? Wait, let me show you. Okay, the sign. Mm -hmm. The sign X and M plus random. Okay. Uh, your pattern is already random. That is the problem in here. So. 
what I want to generate is so that you can see later. Okay, anyway, you can you can also still see, but uh, you will not get it uh, well later if you do like this. Okay, okay. Yes. no no problem. Okay, uh, any other want to uh, share your screen? Yes. Go one more. Is it something like this? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Okay. Right. Okay. So now you create uh, data already, right? Generated data. This is simulated data that you generate. Now, question is, can you get your pattern back? Is Sorry? It, right? Can you get the pattern back? Okay. So can I close this? Okay, so now we want to get the pattern back. Then you you will apply what is called low pass filter. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, there are many low pass filter here. I, I I presented here how many? Four. Right. So I presented four. You can select one of them, <clears throat> or you can uh, try four of them. Okay. Maybe four of them will be better. Okay. Uh, the first one is called time average filter. The second one is called EMA. Okay. So this is uh, is called uh, exponentially weighted moving average. Okay. So in digital sigma processing, this is called IRR. Uh, infinite impulse response. Uh, the third filter I presented here is called uh, Butterworth filter. This is actually better because this is second order low pass filter. Okay, and the last one is moving average. Okay, the moving average depending on your window. You can uh, in here I put uh, three windows. Okay. So let's try that. Okay. <clears throat> let's try that with uh, the first one first, okay? So that you will understand the meaning of this. Say, I will share my screen. Okay, this is my slide. I will put aside here, and this is my uh, data. Okay, I'll come back to this data. Now I will say this is a filter data. Okay, filter data. So what we have here, say I use a time average. Okay. So the Z, now the data is now become Z. Okay, so this is CT. So then I need to get T. This is the time. Right? So let's say T start from one. That means uh, this is plus one. Down. This is the T. And uh, Time average filter data is called W. WT, this is the ZT. Okay. This is just X. So your data is ZT, and your uh, filter data is this uh, WT. So, I, how are we going to compute that? I computed from the second one here. Why? Because uh, equal t minus one okay, divided by t, right? Multiply by the previous one plus z t this one divided by what? With T. Can you follow? OK. 
day. So I press enter. Of course, the first one you can just copy this if you want. Okay. Then I will just compute it down. Okay. So what happened? Let's plot it. Okay, let's plot it. <clears throat> I will plot in the same chart so that you will know that this is actually filtered. Okay, so in here I select data. Okay, so this is the data I add. Right, so I will say filter data. The X still the same. The T here. Oh, why not put the X is um, X here? Sorry, sorry. The X must be X. So that we will have the same X. Then the Y is this a new filter data. Okay. Right. Damn. Wow. Okay, so this is the pattern that we got. Is it representing the actual data? Well, when, when your data is going up, it is going up, right? When data is going down, it's really going down, correct? Again, going up again, it's going up again, and going down again, it's going down again. So it create uh, uh, basically almost the same as your data, but there is a delay. And then it's much smaller. Correct? So using time average, you get that pattern. So let's try the second one. You want? Using Emma. Okay. So if you want to use Emma, you need to set a parameter lambda. Let me uh, copy this sheet. Okay, let me copy this at the end. <clears throat> and then I will just delete this. Okay, instead of time average, I will use Emma. So to get the Emma, I need to get uh, I will set a lambda here. Lambda, you can set it in zero and one. So I will put zero point. Okay, initially, I will put zero point five. Okay, better I will change. Okay, I got that. Lambda. So what I will do, oh, let me, first I will name this lambda. lambda. Then what I will do is, one minus lambda multiply by my previous WT, plus lambda multiplied by my data, ZT. Okay. And then I copy this down. OK. 
Okay, so initially I just copy that. Okay, let me see the result. Oh, oh, much better, right? So let me click this and change that. Oh, I have to change that into a value. Okay with the solid line without a marker, no marker. The line is solid line, I will put it a red line and then no marker, marker option, no marker, there. So this is my Emma, the red one. Clearly uh, still rough, but it's better, isn't it? So of course I can put 0 0.9 here or 0 0.1 there. Closer, huh? <coughs> So if you want to get uh, the value of lambda, right? what is my value of lambda? Oh, you can optimize this if you want. Can you optimize this? How do you, how do you optimize this lambda value? Any, any idea? We're still doing it. Like this. Okay, so uh, you can put the, the Emma part instead of a dot, you can put it as a line. The second, the, the orange. I think you click one dot, you click one orange dot there. Yeah. You can uh, zoom and then uh, change the series to chart type. Yes. Uh, the series two is not scatter, but line. This one, uh, scat scatter, but line. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Right, so then you can see that uh, the pattern is now uh, closer to the real data. Eh? Yes. Right? The pattern yes. M is closer to the actual data. Okay. So in this case, Emma has produced a better uh, filtering to the data to get the actual pattern. Right. So my question a while ago was, uh, is there any way to find the parameter gamma here? <coughs> say, can you change the parameter gamma to be, say, for example, 0 0.9? What will happen? Lambda, right? Yes. Oh, it's, okay. The, in your case, you put lambda. Say 0 0.9. 0 0.9. Then uh, it's become a worse 
Sorry. What happened if you put it at 0 0.1? So what happened if you change to 0 0.1? It, um, the filter become more precise. Hmm. So. Or the M. The M. The lambda, if you change to 0 0.1. So closer, less uh, sensitive to noise, right? Yeah. Okay. The time of it, there's no uh, difference, so, but Emma, you, you change that. Question is, how are you going to find that lambda, that parameter value? How are you going to find the parameter value? Is well, that... I don't know. Maybe we just try. You just Change. try one by one? Yeah. Is there any systematic way to, to get the value? I think there should be. Yeah, what? How? Any idea, probably? Not put two, someone, someone else probably. Anyone have idea how to find the value of the parameter for Emma? Systematically. Any idea? Just idea only. Opinion. Come on. No idea whatsoever. So if you face this kind of problem, what you will do? You will just do a trial error. Fourteen students, no idea whatsoever. Come on. Let me check the participants here. Where's the idea on how to change the value of parameter of EMA systematically? Sanin, you have any idea? No idea, sir. No idea. Anis? No, no idea. No idea also? I'm not, I'm not specializing six. Sorry. Okay, Michael and Jaya, no idea? No, sir. No, okay, okay. So let, let me uh, try this. Okay, I, will, I will share my screen, can I? Okay. I return back, oh. So say I put 0 0.9 here, right? It's very noisy. It's closer to the data, isn't it? It's uh, not that good, okay? If I put 0 0.5, again, it's closer. You said, okay, if I put 0 0.1, well, it's closer to the actual pattern, right? But uh, how are you going to find the parameter here. So I said, okay, I will set any number, okay, 0 0.5. And then the idea is to get the error, yeah? The error square. 
Okay. What is error in this case? The error between the filter data and the data itself. Okay, so you get the error between the filter data minus the data. Okay, and then you square it, right? Okay. You sum all of you, you calculate all the error of P. Okay, then we get the sum square of error. Okay. What is that? Of course, just the sum of the square error. Okay. So after I get the sum square of error, right? Okay, let, let me fix the data. Huh? Otherwise, it will uh, keep moving. I will just control C and then I will paste as value. Okay, so that the data is value, not uh, uh, keep moving because every time I push. So you see the XS initially is 4.15. Okay, so what I will do? Still no idea? How to minimize the SSE? How do you minimize the sum square of error? Anyone knows how to minimize the sum square of error by changing the value of lambda here? So to do that, you do a solver, okay? So set objective value is the SSE in here G3. So you said minimize by changing what? By changing lambda, okay? So I solve, okay, there. Oh, I got uh, zero. Okay. So in this case, the uh, result is not that good okay? because uh, the SSE is zero, lambda is one, right? SSE is zero, lambda is one. So <clears throat> now if I use earlier, so if I use the data earlier, I copy again here. Yeah. Okay. And I do a solver. Again, the same thing. Okay. Then uh, I'll get a, a better data. Say zero point. Uh, I will start with zero point five. And I do this. Yeah, I got uh, around zero point zero four. The lambda is now become. 0.9. Okay. Any question? So if not, you can continue with the next filter, which is a Butterworth filter. And the moving average. So for the Butterworth filter, you have how many parameters there? One, two, three, four, five. So you need to set up five parameters. Okay. And for the moving average, you need to set up three parameters. Okay. Comma one, comma two, comma three. 
<clears throat> okay, let's try a uh, water word filter. So I create a new seed. Let me uh, share screen with you. Okay, so this is the, the first one earlier. I will copy this into a new seed at the end. We'll copy. Okay, and then I will just delete this, the last filter data. Now I need to create a butter word filter. So how to create the water word filter? Uh, it will compute. So first time, first thing first. Okay, if you want to compute that, you need to come. You need to set up the parameter. Okay, so I will call this gamma one, gamma two, gamma three. Okay, gamma four and gamma five. Okay. I'll put any values here. Random, random value. Okay. And then I will copy this and set up as value. Uh, the problem is this gamma, the sum of this okay, must be one. Okay. Sum of this must be one, but this is two. So I need to change some of them. Anyway, this is just a value, so I change this. I just change this one. Okay, so this one I change now. <clears throat> to what? Any value one minus sum of this. Okay. So this is the gamma that I have for butterworth filter. So I will name this parameter. Uh, Formula create from selection. Okay, now I get the uh, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, gamma four, gamma five. Okay. Then what I will do? Then I put into formula. But remember, uh, butterworth filter formula has. Uh, let me share the whole screen so that you will see. Okay. Butterworth formula has uh, T minus two, right? So then we start from uh, T3. Okay. What is this? Equal to comma one, okay, multiplied by T minus one plus gamma two multiply by T minus two plus gamma three multiply by the current theta plus gamma four multiply by the previous theta plus again the last one is comma five multiplied by two previous state okay then you copy this okay. oh where is it there oh much better, isn't it? 
Other word filter is much better than them. Line is solid line. Marker is no marker. Much better than Emma. Of course, now you need to change this value. Okay? So again, you can do trial error, or you can do a using SSE. Stop here. Is there any question? Yeah, for me still processing. Yeah, just look at the recording. Can I hack today? Guys, I cannot hear you. Can you just type? So how about the uh, moving average? Okay. The simplest moving average is actually just the moving average. Let, let me uh, try to show you the moving average. Again, we copy the data. I got it from seat one, right? Move, copy, okay, now become seat four here. This one is, I call it an A. Okay, so I delete this one, the filter data, and then I do a moving average. How do you calculate the moving average? Very easy, okay? So just take the average. The average of the three. Okay. Uh, wait. The moving average is the average of the three average of the three earlier. Okay. Oops. Close it. Okay. And then a copy. There you get up. So again, moving average is also very nice. Okay. It is very close to the, the actual pattern. Right. So I can change that to solid line without the marker. Huh? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so using a uh, low pass filter, you are able to find back the, the actual pattern within the data. Okay. Even if the data is very noisy, you can do that. Okay, let me copy the very noisy data of the uh, normalized distribution. Okay. And I do it using MA. You see that? Okay. Or I can use uh, the part of four here. You see? If you just look at the data, the dot, dot, dot here, 
Okay, you cannot see the background, isn't it? But once you use the the filter, then you can start to see the background. Okay, so the simplest is I just use this as zero point two. I got uh, the actual pattern within the data. So even though your data is very noisy, I can still get it. Same thing here, I will just copy this. And this is using Emma. Okay. Uh, I put it 0 0.1 there. Let me remove the error. Okay, so you get the, the pattern. Using Butterworld is a little bit better, and using Emma again similarly. Eh? So, what did you just learn? When you have data and your data is noisy, okay, you can filter first. How do you filter? You use a low pass filter. There are many low pass filter, then you can uh, try any of that. So, any question? Of course, another way to do is to use a high pass filter. Okay. How do you get the high pass filter? Though so this is the example of high pass filter. Using this high pass filter, what you will get is the noise. Yeah. So using high pass filter, what you get is the, the noise. Of course, uh, remember the, the formula earlier. Okay, so using high pass filter of the data, you get the noise. Okay, so then uh, if you have data minus the noise, you get the pattern. Okay? Okay, let's try this using a high pass filter. I copy again. High pass filter. So I copy again the data. Did I share your, my screen? Okay. So this is the high pass filter. I'll put the I'll put it here and then the Excel. I copy into a new one. Okay, at the end, I copy this and I will call this uh, high pass filter. Yeah? In here, I will put the high pass filter. Okay. Uh, the T here is minus one, so you start from the second one, right? So you have one parameter gamma here. 
Now we'll just use the same lambda or no. So I will I will create the parameter first. Uh, gamma. The gamma I will put 0 0.5 initially. Okay. I'll call this gamma. So what I will do? Gamma multiplied by earlier plus satu plus gamma, right? Divided by two multiplied by your data z minus one plus gamma divided by two multiply by your previous data z minus one okay so i got this so i got the high pass filter how to get the filter pattern how to get the pattern okay so you remember Theta minus the noise equal to pattern, yeah? So then I will say, this is the theta I minus with this noise, I supposed to get that pattern. I copy this down. There. Again, I get the pattern, yeah? This is based on high pass filter. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's complete now. You can either use a low pass filter or high pass filter. Yeah. Of course, now you can change this value also. So 0 0.1 or 0 0.9. Okay. Oh. Closer. 0 0.9 is closer. Filter be shifted. Any question? Uh, sir. Hmm. Uh, do you use my the equivalent emitter for high pass filter and low pass filter. Can you, can you type your question? Anyone else have a question? What is the IK filing of mini tab? I don't know. I don't use mini tab. Oh, okay. Okay. Anyway, you can, uh, oh, you know the formula, so you can always create that, that formula. Right, right. Yeah. Mm. I don't use mini tabs, so I don't know. Mini tab, I use it uh, 1980s, probably, yeah? during statistics. So. But I don't use it anymore for uh, almost uh, <laughs> 40 years. Uh, one more question. Mm, no, please. But it's somewhat unrelated. I mean, uh, it's for my thesis. So, 
my thesis is about two stage memory governing problem uh, and BI for combining image like right. So maybe I found out that you read something about uh, I mean write something about AHP. So maybe you can help me like if I don't understand. You mean uh, analytic hierarchy process? Yeah, something like that. Oh, you, you can so check my that, like, you can check my tutorial on that. So I have. Uh, a, I know. Yeah. What HPI I found it. Right. So you can check the tutorial in Revolut on HP if you want. Okay. So. Yeah, HB is just one of the uh, multi criteria decision making. So we will not discuss it in this class, but uh, it yeah. you, can, you can read in, in Refoleto. Hmm. Any other question? You know how to filter the data using low pass or high pass filter, right? So next meeting, I wish to introduce regression to you. I, I heard you already learned this in statistic, is that correct? Linear regression. Yes, yes, we did. Minitap. Minitap So you, you learn linear regression in statistics? Yes. Yes. All, all to minute tap. Huh? Multiple linear regression, non-linear. Oh, oh wait, wait. Uh a basic linear uh basic regression. I think it's linear regression. Okay. Did you uh, know how to compute it in matrix form or think yeah i i think with matrix form is like a graph right with like a graph right matrix form is like a graph right? no oh okay using the algebra uh no. Okay. In, in when you learn about the uh, linear algebra, did you learn about generalized inverse? Generalized inverse. Did you learn about SVD, the singular value decomposition? I. I think we learn, but I cannot really sure, sir, because the last time we learned in our algebra is semester two. Okay. So it's been two years. We haven't touched the subject. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, I'll please check the, the slide in that I posted in Google Classroom. Okay. So uh -huh. you can. Uh, uh, first before the class uh, of course if you want to practice inside the class long long time that's okay but uh, uh, at the same time uh, if you can practice before and then you can learn faster then uh, we can our class can move faster okay uh, it's better yeah. you read by yourself and then you can uh, have more questions during the class rather than uh, you know, just keep uh, practicing in the class, right? Uh, we have limited time, but uh, we have many things to cover. But it's up to you again. Okay. If you want to uh, gain more, then you, you need to prepare yourself better. That's my point. Okay. You enter the class empty head, no question at all. So then uh, 
I don't know. It's a pity if you uh, do that for yourself. Okay, we can learn much better than this. Can you? I'm, I'm trying to, to, to encourage you to ask question. I even put recitation point. That means uh, if you ask question, you can claim it. You know? Okay, so I hope you can be more active okay, from uh, next meeting, yeah? Thank you for today. Thank you, sir. And uh, please practice if you don't uh, finish yet. Yes, sir. We will watch the recording. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.